Communication and data interpretation. Approaching role play. Lesson one. What are the important aspects of communication? Important aspects of communication to consider when doing role play. You should show empathy. You can do this by listening to what the patient has to say. Maintain good eye contact. Use facilitated responses, you know, nodding along. Show that you're listening and that you're interested in what the patient has to say. Speak clearly and concisely. Be aware of your grammar and um, don't use any jargon or colloquial slang terms. Show you understand the situation. So when a patient comes in to me, I'll often say, so after I've heard them out, what they have to say, oh, so just so I've understood correctly, and then I'll repeat back their symptoms or concerns, presenting complaint. This lets the patient know that I was listening and it can also act to jog their memory if they've left something out or if I've left something out, they can remind me of that. Actively listen and use uh, use of verbal and non-verbal communication. Eye contact is a big one. Introduce yourself. Always introduce yourself and your role so there's no confusion for the patient and who they're speaking to. So, hi there, I'm Connell, I'm the dentist. How can I help you? It's very simple. A good tip to, is also to remember the patient's name or the actor in this case. This goes a long way. I have it up on the computer screen and work behind me so I can cheat and have a look if I forget. But you can't do this in the multiple mini interviews. Um, so a good tip I use for remembering names is, you know, repeat the name straight back to them once you hear it. So, oh, hi John, nice to meet you. So John, what's brought you in today? This is a good technique for remembering names and makes the patient feel more at ease. It's a good tip for life as well. People always appreciate having their names remembered. Don't waste your reading time. Break down the question, right? What is it they're asking me? What is the important takeaway point from this question that they want to know? Um, and you want to be sure you're answering the question being asked of you so you get the best marks. Make eye contact. It's a great way to show empathy and shows confidence as well. Having poor eye contact can undermine what you're saying as it looks like you don't even have confidence in what you have to say. For me, I work particularly hard to come across as confident to reassure my patients. This is partly because I'm aware I look, I look quite young. And if you're doing a sort of minor, minor oral surgery on someone, they, it's quite often, you know, once a week, patients will quiz me on how old I am, how long have I had my degree, what are your qualifications, how many times have you done this, and so on. So it's better just to instill confidence from the very start, good eye contact, clear and concise speech, so on and so forth. In role play situations, you are generally expected to act as though you're the dental student or dentist, though this is not always the case, so be sure to read the question. Be, be yourself, but be professional. Don't try and be someone you're not. It's much easier just to be yourself. There's less to think about. Speak politely and clearly. Listen to what's been said to you and respond accordingly. Role play situations are really unnatural feeling. They can be a bit awkward, but you can be assured the actors doesn't feel awkward, the examiner doesn't feel awkward, so why should you feel awkward? Just go for it. Uh, let, let your own personality shine through and try not to let embarrassment get the better of you because everyone's in the same boat, it's exactly the same for everyone. Remain calm. A large part of role play and multiple mini interviews in general is to create a stressful atmosphere. Often the content of the situation is not what important, but how you deal with the pressure and the stress of the situation or the station. The stations are designed to push you uh, so the interviewer can see how you perform under pressure. If you feel yourself getting overwhelmed or a bit waffly, take a moment to compose yourself, of course. You're not going to get penalised for this. This actually shows a maturity, a good stress management when under pressure. Allow me a moment, let me gather my thoughts here. So just maintain your composure and don't get in your own head. If you feel a station hasn't gone well, who cares, it's over. You can still get 100% in the next station. So focus on your efforts into that. Don't let one bad station drag all the others down. Handshakes. I don't feel too strongly one way or the other on this one. Often there isn't time for handshakes in these interviews. Uh, you should be able to read the mood as to whether a handshake is appropriate. I mean, don't feel you, the need to climb over tables and chairs to get a handshake in. It's probably just best to crack on with the interview, but you'll know yourself. Acknowledge both the examiner and the actor. I would say on the way in and on the way out of the interview. I know the examiner isn't meant to interact at all, but saying hello and goodbye and thank you isn't going to do any harm. This also helps to build a bit of rapport with the interviewers. Smile when you can. Obviously, if the scenario is breaking news to someone that they have cancer, you don't want to do this with a big 
grin across your face. Smile when appropriate. Makes you appear confident. Makes you appear relaxed. Don't be sat there like, you know, the joker. Body language. This is important. From now, I want you to be more aware of your body language when you speak to anybody. This is just so it becomes habit. And then it gives you less to think about in the actual interview. If you're doing it all the time, it'll just come as it'll be second nature. So don't slouch, put your shoulders back, and um, you look more confident, you project your voice better. Don't fidget. It shows you are you aren't paying attention fully or that you're letting nerves get the better of you. Keep your hands by your sides or one over the other, you know. And um, if you're someone who struggles with fidgeting or does it sort of subconsciously. If you if you're quite expressive when you see it and use lots of hand gestures, that's fine. Just do you. Don't disrupt the actor. Just because you aren't speaking doesn't mean you aren't getting marks. We've been over this a good few times now. Listening is one of the main components of communication. Sit and listen to what the actor has to say until they are finished. You can then summarize back to them what they've said, depending on the scenario, to show that you were listening. This also gives you some time to think about what you yourself would like to say. Open and close questions. So open questions means it's broad. It can get many answers or long answers. This is good for gathering maximum information and it's good to use at the start, you know, um, what's brought you in today, very broad. To get more targeted information, uh, use a more closed approach. Closed answers generally get a short answer or yes or no questions. Oh, has this pain been keeping you awake at night? You know, there's not a whole lot to say other than yes or no to that one. Show empathy throughout. Repeating back what the patient has said can be useful at showing empathy. You want to show you understand what they're feeling and you'll endeavor to correct it for them. Be clear in your communication. You will have to speak to people from all walks of life. This interview isn't the time for you to show off all the big words you know or how posh your private school was, all right? You can still be articulate using simple, clear language. George Orwell said, never use a long word where a short one will do. Never lie or falsely reassure. If the scenario says, tell the patient he's got oral cancer, you can't then say, oh, you'll be all right, mate. Be honest and don't just appease the actor. Instead, for this kind of scenario, you could say, yes, you have oral cancer. It's a cause for concern, but we have a great team here and you'll be provided with quality care and we're here to support you throughout. If you're unsure, if you're unsure about something, don't lie, come clean. I don't know the answer to that, but I will find out for you and let you know as soon as possible. You can't be expected to know everything, so don't feel that you have to lie. So to put into practice what we've been talking about, you know, practice friends or family. So, hi there, I'm Carl Gallagher. I'm a dentist from Sheffield. Can I just confirm your name and date of birth, please? Ah, lovely to meet you, Jim. Is it okay if we discuss, I don't know, the pain you've been having? Starting with opening que open questions. So tell me about this pain. What do you think's causing it? Because, you know, very often the patients have a very good idea what is causing it. Oh, a bit on a knot and it cracked. You know, oh, there's your answer. Explore their ideas, concerns, and expectations. Show empathy through verbal and non-verbal communication. I'm sorry to hear that. That must have been tough for you. Or, oh no, Jim, you've been awake all night with this. We have to get this sorted for you. You know, you can empathize with people. And usually, you know, if someone has been awake all night with toothache, they look shattered and you do feel a genuine empathy for them. Closing and summary. Ensure that you arrange a solution and summarize and thank the patient. Thanks for speaking with me. Have you got any more questions before you go? Let's follow up in seven days. Would you like me to call someone, call a taxi, whatever, you know? Lesson one completed. Do you have an interview for medicine, dentistry or veterinary school? The interview is the final hurdle of your application, but also the most competitive. Are you nervous about your interview or unsure where to start preparation? Here's where we can help. With a few clicks, you'll get access to 100 Medic Mind video tutorials covering 10 hours of theory, 150 MMI stations, live weekly webinars, and more. You'll get a breakdown of all the topics interviews typically cover and real life MMI stations. Our award-winning interview course is trusted by over 12,000 students in over 37 countries and has been written by official medical school examiners. So, what are you waiting for? Get started on our course today.